Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Apoorv Malik, and I will be the host of today's webinar on behalf of TNV Acad. Now it's time for me to introduce all of you to our guest speaker of the day. For today's webinar, we are glad to have Mr. Ajay Bajpayee with us as the guest speaker. The topic with which he is here today with all of us is non-conformity and auditor as per clause 9.2 of Management System Standards. This is the fourth session by Mr. Ajay Bajpayee on non-conformity. And like previous sessions, he will be covering one more aspect related to non-conformity today. Our distinguished speaker, Mr. Ajay Bajpayee, has done his bachelor's in engineering in metallurgy stream. He is also a lead auditor in ISO 9001, 14001, 45001, 37001, 22000, 27001, 13485, 22301, and 50001 standards, respectively. He has an industrial experience of around 15 plus years in field of implementation of management system standards and around 25 plus years in field of auditing and training. He has been imparting training through the medium of webinars, seminars, live sessions and online and offline mode to a number of organizations, entrepreneurs and individuals on various topics related to ISO terminologies and how ISO standards are implemented within organizations. It was just a brief introduction of our guest speaker today. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Ajay Bajpayee. I may request Mr. Ajay Bajpayee now to please take over and start the webinar. Thank you very much, Apoorv and the other team members who are participating into this webinar, which is of interest to all of ISO community globally. And this is the theme which we have been discussing for last three webinars on the same topic, that is MC. Understanding the MC, then getting into auditing and coming out with the report, which will be converted into a format called AFAR format or MC format. And last time we have discussed this format with respect to minor non conformity I have taken a case of 9001 standard for minor non conformity Now we are into understanding the major non conformity So who will decide that this is a major or minor? This is to be decided by the team leader or lead auditor. For example, in this case, when we open this form, there are three days, 3, 4, and 5th August on to the right hand side of this format. Top says Auditor Finding Action Report or MC and categorization is major. Then we start with the AFAR number 01. Every MC has to be identified with a particular number and, and the dates and the months and the year on to the next right hand side situation. Unless identified by respective numbers and days and so on, NC format will not have any meaning. So this is a format which has been filled respect to a particular situation encountered during the audit of a theoretical company called Fish and Ritter Technology Private Limited. There is no company with this name, but for example, we have taken some name. And the process is work environment. And clause is 6.4. Of which standard? Now we come to this side. Standard is ISO 13485, which is also popular as <coughs> MD QMS. Okay, MD means medical devices. It is not important because we are not discussing the standard, but we are getting into the NC reporting. See. In, in case of ISO 9000 certification or any management system certification, it is very important that we discuss the subject with respect to the subject. We do not derail ourselves from the discussions. Many of the NCs are written, but they are not understood. Many NCs are not written, but they are understood because the already have picked them up. So it is of great importance how alert how active is the authority 
the client who has applied for third party certification audit or if it is a question of internal audit how alert is the department head how keen the departmental managers are willing to go for improvements nc means improvement nc means value addition the moment the all members involved into this process understand that this is a value addition activity value added work we are going to do and many others say this is a fact finding activity not a fault finding activity theoretically they say that they understand it or not i do not know because many of those who big say big things when they see the results of this written down and when they see how well they have organized the audit they are normally not able to reach the objective because saying is one thing doing is another thing and recording and reporting are other chapters other steps and then understanding the records and reports are next to next level chapters so every subject every topic is important in its own self i may give a very good speech i may talk of lot of good things i may talk of body language i may talk of you know power of speech i may talk of synergy power i may talk of team management but we have seen many such persons who talk several good things but when it comes to conduct of the audit they fail miserably when it comes to conduct of training it fails miserably in this venture of ours which is with the name of tnv academy we are trying to share our knowledge and expertise of last four decades not only of mine but we have got number of team members who are located globally they keep on sharing their knowledge with us then we transform their knowledge to a good english language a good presentable language and it is shared with the global community of iso which includes the client the trainer the auditors and certification bodies anybody can learn so i can say even the accreditation boards may learn from what we are presenting here because we are talking of the ground reality which many of the accreditation board members may not have seen might not have seen because i have come across some of the accreditation body auditors who came uh, from standard bodies who came from national standard bodies globally and they have not seen much of the industry so they have taken experts with them but having knowledge in themselves and having utilization of expert is another subject so anybody and everybody can learn from our webinars from our seminars because they are conducted by taking the examples by giving the examples of the real time industry no th no theory is here theory we keep in the books to the respect of the formulation of this format but when we talk of the incidences they are real time incidences they are practical situations we discuss how and what can be written why things are written like this so once we understand the concept of this then the categorization comes which is at the top of the this format this is put after writing the draft report and discussing with the team of the auditors i have seen few team leaders who will say that no we are correct we have understood our concept is clear and then they fail because they have not involved the team of auditors every auditor has got definite problem and every auditor in this three days third fourth and fifth of august 22 would have gone to different departments of this xyz company who is into manufacturing of some kind of medical devices that is why they are going for md pms iso 13485 certification so the theme is not clear to many of the senior and lead auditors who think that they are the ones who, who are the sole responsible for taking decisions nobody is sole responsible for any decision the decisions the reasons the root cause the correction the corrective action all are a team activity we have seen many situations where a weak non conformity was found this was a minor one but it was handled so badly by the team of 
the ISO community involved in that particular type of a situation because situation is very very important. Any nonconformity is raised against a particular situation, and anybody else looking at need to put himself into that kind of a situation. We also give the example that the shoe pinch is known by a person when he is putting his foot into the shoe. So the person who is going to read the report, he cannot read the nonconformity just in isolation without looking at the situation without taking him to the situation of the activity. He cannot just read two lines and say this is a good NC or bad NC or the clause number is written wrong or the major minor, you know, the configuration is wrong. All that is not correct unless he is going to put himself into that situation. We, the trainers and the lead auditors, with so much of experience and expertise, which we have learned only by participating in the teams, various conferences, Globally, being a part of many huge conferences for many, many decades and participated there with a positive mode of learning, not trying to criticize others, not trying to criticize another trainer, another certification body, another auditor. All those are not positive signs for learning. And learning is always when you are trying to go to the facts and figures. So, the facts and figures will now come here which is called objective evidence. So this column is mean for writing what is the requirement and then what is the evidence. So we always need to write what is the requirement of the standard into this column. Because we first of all as an auditor need to understand what are the requirements? Again, we have drafted a report, that's fine. We have discussed it in teams, that's fine. But now, this format is going to be filled. And as I explained to you all and to myself earlier, that this format filled in one company is at times being reviewed to the level of peer assessment, to the level of national bodies of the organization of various countries. It goes being reviewed by the standard bodies of many companies, accreditation board, when their assessments in this supply chain of certification are being understood. It is all a supply chain. It starts from input, it goes it go to finally the customer feedback after the processing and PDCA cycle is done. So that PDA cycle is implementable anywhere and everywhere into the management system certification. So now we have noted down the requirements as point one and two with respect to what clause 6.4.1 and clause 6.4.2. It is talking of work environment. It is talking of contamination requirement because we are talking of a medical device certification. Our concept should be very, very clear. I am taking a little back to different standard. For example, we are talking of environment management system. So there the work environment will not be a contamination control normally. It can be what? Emission of gases, dust control, dirt control, you know, the vibration, the noise levels. Those are the things which constitute the work environment. The theme changes the moment we talk of MD equipment. The theme will again change when we talk of a situation of health and safety. The theme will again change when we talk of FSMS certification. Clause remains the same. The Words of standard may also remain same at times, but the requirements change it because it will take reference of various other statutory regulatory requirements, you know, the uh, country specific requirement, the medical requirement, you know, the post COVID, pre COVID, after COVID requirement, so many things will come into the picture. So those things are written down as a requirement here. The requirement may also be referring to the standard procedure of the company, the work instruction of the company, or statutory regulatory requirement, depending upon the situation which we have observed into the company and what reference we want to take to see that a non conformity is documented as an evidence which will add value to the working management system of the organization. All depends upon 
the attitude and the thought of the auditor and which certification body he is representing and what are their themes. A lot of discussions are going on today. A lot of fake certifications are coming into the world. Okay. Many auditor trainers try to say India and Asia, but we have seen the world. We are seeing the world day and day out. Every second we get a call from and a report from a different part of the world. The whole world is going in a similar way and similar thoughts. The ISO business has been taken as a business. It is, its technicality, its requirement has been lost. So we are trying to make effort by this way of training and seminar that if we show organization that we can indicate improvements by way of non-conformity that you can really be involved and your systems will definitely improve by our experienced auditors who are writing a report in such a way that your system will definitely definitely improve you know we cannot give a guarantee in writing but when discussions are on we, we always say that yes if you look at your operating system today and give the the mass to different departments from a scale of 1 to 10 and finally you get a 100 100 today is 80 <coughs> so we can demonstrate that once stage one already done and you meet the requirements based on our reports and before we come to stage two audit we can ensure that you will reach 85 or 90 rating or marks and again when we come to stage two audit findings you complete them and where we are reaching the certification or no certification there are many organizations who come across and i have been personally to number of organize 100 plus organizations who never wanted to go for certification unless customer specific requirements regulators have forced them to go for it because they were very happy implementing systems but not looking for certification certifications or no certifications the theme is to have taken actions onto the non-conformity when it comes to particularly the situation of a major non-conformity when system have failed when statutory regulatory requirements have not met or when there are many non-conformity or overall system or of organization seems to be failing in the views of the audit team and as accepted by audit team and as documented in their report draft report and then accepted by audit team then yes it is converted into a major non-conformity by writing the various evidences here okay these evidences are documented here to support the categorization as major non-conformity. So these are the examples the auditor have written here. Okay. Dust and loose articles were found in assembly area. Okay. Employees were seen with loose hair wearing outdoor shoes and consuming food in assembly area. Number two, also. See, now there are three situations, so there are three kind of statements the auditor is writing. Also, no sanitizer were installed in the near proximity of assembly area. You see, this is a situation he had noted down. I will not say anything unless I had a discussion with the team. Auditors have a bad habit of jumping to conclusions. Many auditors will jump to conclusions immediately. They will say, oh, that company is very good or that company is very bad. There is no definition of very good or very bad. There is nothing like good or bad. We always say facts and figures. And we always demonstrate that yes, these facts and figures documented as an evidence and written here will make the company system fail. Okay. You may be supplying to customers, you are into the business today, but tomorrow, if the major non conformity points are not addressed too adequately, your customer will also show you which direction of business you will take ultimately. Profitability will be reduced, customer complaints will be increasing. You know, state regulatory boards, compliance will not be there. There will be complaints, complaints coming all the time, and you will be surrounded by a sea of complaints, I would say. Then, third point, he said, What? Schedules were there, but no actions were taken. Schedules were documented. That is how they have reached to the third party stage situation because documentation was there. 
So they have crossed stage one and now they are at stage two already. So what happened then? Once these evidences are documented effectively, the auditor signs and auditee accept. We see few reports into the third party audit, auditor name is there, signature are, are there, sometimes signatures are there, the name is not there. So this is not a good situation. Here also the name is not there. It is not, it is not put deliberately because there should be a problem into this report format also. Then only we can discuss it. So signature does not mean much. You cannot identify a signature into the second or third round of the audit. First round of the audit, yes, you may understand Amrathya Sen or Tiku Bhai Pakliwala is the audit already. But when you go on into various rounds of the audits and you want to establish the trends, you want to go into the details of the root cause analysis. You will need to know who was the auditor, who is the auditor, who has accepted it. Good. So now they have accepted it. That this is, there is a major non conformity because of the three concerns or cars or NC points raised as added. So now what do we do? Minor non conformity also needs a root cause analysis. Major non conformity also needs to have a root cause analysis done by the auditee, by the person responsible of this company, Mr. X, he will write the root cause analysis. If he is trying to write it again independently as a single person, he may fail. We always believe that a teamwork is always good to conduct a root cause analysis. <laughs> there are many techniques which we study in part like cause and effect diagram, brainstorming, parent analysis and so on. Then is to be implemented depending upon what is the kind of operation company is have, having. Troubleshooting method can be different for different type of company depending upon different type of processes, mass production, many mass production, less mass production, off and on production, night shift production, day shift production. The production by continuity of machine, production by discontinuity of several machines. So all that depends upon the type of organization, type of products you have. And let me tell you one more thing very clearly. One type of products can also be produced in several ways. In the thumb rule, that this particular tea manufacturing will only be done in this particular way. <laughs> this IV cannula will be assembled only in this way. There can be hundreds and thousands of ways of technological manufacturing. Many auditors go by thought. I have seen the international auditors even coming to me when I was a manufacturer, vice president of a multinational company. They made me a statement that, yes, sir, we have seen this type of product and process in Germany. But this is different in your company. That time I was also a qualified leader. But I said politely, sir, that's very fine. Germany was Germany, that company was, was that company. So let's not go into the, uh, against the 1911, again, the theme of the uh, conflict of interest and confidentiality. What we are doing, we are doing this is our process. So let's discuss that clearly and do not try to, you know, make my team demotivated. Okay, what is happening in Germany may not be done here today in this situation. We may reach that status maybe after 10 years. So let's talk of the root cause analysis with respect to the company we are having, with respect to the products which we are having, with respect to working environment we have. Working environment is not defined in any management system standard. It is always with respect, it is always an open situation, and the organization has to abide by some of the rules and regulations as stated by statutory regulatory boards at times and as, as stated by supplementary standards at times and the organization can document in its own way with the technology they have with the kind of production process they have with the type of instruction control they have so there are no thumb rules for that so no auditor can dictate and demonstrate his own thoughts over and above the requirement of the standards and the production processes so then they do a root cause analysis they written into the three since there were three evidences the already the client right to clearly address them by three kinds of 
three types of root cause analysis. Not one root cause analysis. Yes, sir. We, we have missed it. We will do it. We forgot doing it, so we will do it. All those are stupid kind of a root cause analysis. We always want companies to become smart, you know, technologically advanced, and right? One to one, because one to one meeting keeps the best results. So one to one addressal of the against objective evidence gives the best results. So one root cause analysis is done as a team, which is also to be accepted by the auditor. Not that auditor will write something and the form goes on traveling further. No. Auditor will stop here if you have written if you have been wrong root cause analysis. An intelligent auditor will also stop the auditor. We'll always have a discussion. Sir, this is not the right root cause of analysis. My intentions were different. The standard required were different, which we have written in point one and two, but your point one and two are different than what we envisage as the practical root cause analysis. So it is again redone at times. Then once it is done perfectly accepted by the auditor, then we wish the audit team goes for a correction. Because the correction is something which needs to be done immediately. Immediately has no time classification like in one second or one minute or 10 minutes or 10 hours or two days. It is a practical situation where company team has to take decisions of how fast, how quick, a good correction can be done as acceptable to auditors also. We do not expect it to be done. Some auditors will say before the closing we said that has been corrected. We don't believe that normally unless it is demonstrated with the, with the help of some document correction done, some process changes have been done, some work instruction have been revised, the old documents have been taken back. A team has been trained. Unless minimum of these things are done, the competence improved. Unless minimum of these things are done, we do not accept the correction actions. Okay. And whenever we accept the correction action, whether in one attempt or two attempt or three attempt, there is no bar. There is no situation which will stop an auditor to do it correct number of times. You know, they can do it. Unless it becomes a almost perfect and almost accepted by the Team of the auditors. Again, I said team of the auditors. I always say that you can't do it alone. It is always a teamwork. In the team, we have got some experts of this side, some experts of that clause, some experts of this function. You know, every auditor has got some expertise available with him. Maybe the, the technical expert needs to be utilized at time before the correction is accepted. But now, finally, if it is accepted at all, then we go to what is called Corrective actions. Okay. Now, what is corrective action? Corrective action is something which is a little in-depth analysis, long-term actions. Okay. Looking through across the organization, looking into various departments, various functions which are related to similar kind of objective evidences which are raised in the column two plus one above. Okay. So then they write the Corrective action. And since this is a major non conformity, auditor, auditor both have to go into more depths before they really write down the corrective action. Because these corrective actions will definitely mean a lot for the organization. Their systems are going to change to a to an extent that they will be becoming acceptable to the auditor. Since there has been a major non conformity their certification process would have stopped in generally. Okay, their processes will require a lot of changes. So, this need not to be done hurriedly. Some organizations will try to write it. Yeah, yeah, yeah sir, we know corrective action, we will just write it. But, but you will write it, we know. We have been playing into this field for four decades. Our team members, thousands of us based globally who are a part of our this, you know, venture of sharing the knowledge with the global teams of ISO community. And our aim is to see that ultimately it all improves globally. One product, one process improving in what one part of Hong Kong may not improve it globally unless all similar nature of operations of that unit because they are a multinational organization, multi-locational unit. They have units in 50 countries. 
200 units they have. So we want this to improve upon all across the organization. So it is not something which can be done immediately. And there is a situation that they may, may not also take the indefinite time. We have seen organization dropping the certification because the time limits have crossed. They have lost the interest into the certification. They have lost interest into the closing of this major non community. They think they cannot do it today. Or if they try to do it, their production system, their marketing system, their customer base will be lost. So we have to keep a tighter and closer watch. And as a certification body auditor, one need to keep on breaking the plan. The MR, the coordinator, sir, where is the corrective action plan? We always deal very carefully with the T of the smart. T is target oriented, tracking it on a continual basis. Not leave the client going into a deep sleep. Don't allow him to become into going to coma situation because once he goes to coma, he will never come back to certification. Fitness again. You will never be able to take him into the certification situation further. Because the lead auditor is one who can either take the company to further move into certification or he sometimes creates a situation. We have seen number of cases where the auditor has handled situation so badly. He has demotivated the team by number of writings of a major non community and company never came back to us for certification. I have seen it happening 30 years back when I started my good career into DNV certification. When I went to NQA UK certification, I have seen company getting demotivated by some of the auditors of our team, some of the contracted auditors who have demotivated the team by series of major non-conformity written down, documented, but not tracked. However, there had been number of good auditors who had given follow-up audits, but company came back in due time. They have been certified. <laughs> they have been doing certification for many, many years thereafter. Because they thought they are a <coughs> part and parcel of the this team. My throat is a little bad. So, in major non conformity writing, accepting the corrective action, the lead auditor has a lot of great role to play along with the team of quality, his team members, and certification body. That is why I always say into the lead auditor courses. The lead auditor is the key to the entire process of certification. We like MOC, if you had been to the club, like Rotary Club and Loyal Club and many associations uh, meeting, he is the master of ceremony. He is the guiding force for a good certification to take this ultimately. Because AMAJ of major non community not to stop the organization from getting certified or not processing further, not processing further. Aim it to see that yes, they do corrections, they take corrective actions, and they improve upon their system and they move to the next step or next phase of certification. They also then what this happened equally important to define and document the responsibility and correct proposed implementation. Yes. Once that is done. Corrective actions are accepted. Then they implement it. And then what happens? Verifications. In case of major situations, major non covid situations, most of the verifications will normally require to be done at site, means on site verification. Unless a typical situation is there where a video conferencing or on site seeing or documentary evidences or you know evidences coming into a pack of the listing by uh, you know uh, cd video pen drive can be seen and closing can be done we have all been through covid situations and still the impacts are there many ab audits many cb audits many trainings are still going on various online platforms so it is acceptable as on date to most of us as a certification community, but it should be verified going into the depth, depth, not by saying yes, it has been done, yes, it has been done, yes, accepted. No, writing down so much minimum is accepted, more than this can also be written, but not making a history. 
we always have to decide the limits of minimum and maximum into certification situation, particularly when we talk of NC. Some auditors will write uh, a history and it's very difficult for auditor to understand and bring the gist out of it so that he can make a <coughs> workable situation out of that NC. And some auditors are so brief that you need to apply the formulas of mathematics, you know, expansion theory, exponential graphs to extend that NC. Both of them are not acceptable. Acceptable write up will be which is clear, which is crisp, to the point, specific, and where from authority who is going to read it, who is going to take action, can say, yes, it is self explanatory to me. Yes, it is a major non conformity with respect to point one two and three. Yes, I can take definite actions. Normally, the standards and we all auditors and trainers believe that NC should be self explanatory provided it is documented well by your experienced auditor whose intentions are clear. Yes, yes, I want to see that my major NC will bring upon improvement into the operations and working of the management system of the organization. I am not doing just the job of formality. Many auditors do formality. Yes, sir, I have raised NC, I have written down the NC, so my job is over. I cannot use the wrong words into the seminar, but they are not acceptable. You know, those auditors will not have a long life. Somewhere or the other, they will be disrespected in the society of ISO community. And many such auditors are barred from doing audit because they receive multiple feedbacks and multiple complaints from the audit, from the reviewers, from the fellow team members. And they, they, I have seen, I must have trained, you know, few thousands of the auditors. Out of few thousands of auditors, only few hundred could become acceptable good auditors because it is not everybody's business to become acceptable auditors to the ISO community. It requires a lot of hard working. They have to come out of the situations of all politics and all weather effects and all family functions and all. They have to be a lot of sacrifices. Then only they can become a successful these auditors because they are not supposed to change this based upon their convenience. They are not supposed to change the change the schedule depending upon their convenience. The convenience is of client, convenience is of the organization whom they are going to provide their auditing services. They are not the gods. God is ultimately the Client, the company, the team member, the certification body. Many auditors, these auditors globally, sometimes by default, understand them as the God and they start behaving in a wrong fashion. I have seen number of such auditors globally in last 40 years of my career where, where I've audited thousands of organizations globally. And many such auditors have been stopped from conducting the audit order. I am emphasizing this because we are now at the verification of activity. If this verification is not done correctly, with good thoughts and with concepts of improving upon the organization, the value addition, the CDCA thoughts, the management system principles are not applied here, then this closing will be not effective. So, once it is an effective closing by an uh, intelligent, smart auditor, lead auditor team, or by the team of a combination of MR and their auditors into a case of eternal audit, then only it is understood to be a successful write up of major non conformity from top and coming to the end of this, which is the verification of closures assessed by MR or team leader with the date and so on. And you think this is the end of this? No, this is not, not the end of this. Then all this. One major or many major or few minors and observation will ultimately go to the analysis mode. It is going to analysis mode, then they will understand the direction of the NC and direction where it is going to the organization. So this is what I thought I will discuss into the as a conceptual part of major non conformity I again say. The writing is very, very important. All languages are very, very funny when they are going to be put into this format. Unless and until analyzed by the entire group who is involved into this process. A major NC can be written in a way that when already is reading, 
Sometimes it is deliberately by auditors and certain body. I don't want to go into the details of that, but it can be very well read as a minor non conformity A minor non conformity written in a way of Hindi, English, Kannada, Tamil, or Russian language, it may be read by RUT as a major one because the intent is different. So, to clarify our intents, we need to understand this writing should be very, very clear. And in most of the situation, it will be self explanatory unless the intentions are different. We cannot do much about the intention unless the whole mass of certification community raises their hands and they come out and they say yes iso management system certification means improvement improvements and improvements globally if you can reach to that situation very well we can accept these major non-conformity very well we can take down the follow-up audits we can welcome the same auditors a different set of auditors different depending on what situation and availability of time and the availability of situations so there are no hard and fast rule for that. It all depends upon the situation and timelines of the client and auditing. But we always say that yes, it is good to use the same team. So that because they have understood the situations very well, they know the concept, they have gone into the depth of root cause analysis, objective evidence, and so they are the best to take decisions further. But yes, the decision can be taken otherwise also. So all the auditors are not going to live for 100 years in this world. I have seen into many closing situations where some other auditor wants to go because the earlier one said, reach the God. So what to do? Some other auditor will come who is not yet reach the God. So different kind of decisions can be taken, different kind of situation can be seen. And nobody on the earth generally has a authority to make comments on what had been done by others unless he had analyze the situation thoroughly unless he has been to similar situation which is not really possible you cannot simulate the situations every time what pipe manufacturing was going on one month back when mr sharma had done the audit and he raised a major non conformity but now mr sharma is not in the world so when mr Verma or mr george is going for the closure of this major non conformity the similar situation may not be simulated by the organization. He will have to look at some different size of pipe manufacturing, some different working environment, maybe there it was a winter when audit was being done one month back, now it is summers or the major uh, you know hurricane coming in this time of a uh, rainy season. So situations are different. So it is the intellectual power of a certification body and auditors or auditor team who have to take a decision on the closing of this major non conformity and really get benefit out of this major non conformity <clears throat> so generally speaking this part is over and then you can go into uh, understanding the certification process into our various websites of our group and uh, where a lot of further explanations are given and you can also ask some questions to me and i will conduct one more session on this nc situation that will be the final outcome outcome of this four classes that will be the part five the analysis of non-conformity after understanding reporting opening and closing and so on so thank you very much Apur, you can ask your team if they have any questions sir i have a question uh, regarding this concept the date which has been mentioned in, in the afr as 3 4 and 5 so we we have to mention the date of the audits uh, or the date of the uh, nc on or date on which the nc was given very good question but this question has not uh, you know much of the answer because this is only a <clears throat> theoretical situation which has been presented into this format Generally speaking, the date should be of the day and date of the audit. But this is a summary I have tried to present that yes, this audit was for three days. Maybe number one NC was found in on first day, number two was found on second day, number three was found on third day. Hypothetically, we can look at it that way. You know, but generally speaking, we say that yes, one NC, one form, one incident is always good. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. If any other of the participants has any questions, they can please ask. If uh, none of the participants has any questions, I would request them that if they have questions in future regarding all of these four sessions, which which are uh, which Bajpayee sir has conducted for on non-conformity sessions, so they can please put their question in the comment section of this video, which will be uploaded on the YouTube channel, and then uh, we will be forwarding those questions to Mr. Bajpayee, and definitely he will be answering them. So we can now come to the conclusion of this particular session. I would say that. Uh, the way Mr. Ajay Bajpayee has segregated this particular concept of non-conformity and related concepts is extremely beneficial for all of us who has joined all these four sessions till now in understanding all the aspects of non-conformity, how non-conformity should be observed, how it should be written in the specified format, what all information should be written, and the explanation, the way of explanation was ex uh, was really helpful for all of us to uh, understand as an auditor that how the NCs should be reported and documented when the audit is being conducted so that the organization who is the auditee knows uh, and understand uh, pretty well that what is the non-conformity which is being raised and what they need to do about it. It, it is a really uh, helpful knowledge for all of us in understanding all the related concepts and scopes of non-conformity and as Mr. Ajay Bajpayee said, said that uh, the fifth session will again be on non-conformity and it will be the closing session of this particular topic. I can also say with much confidence that our participants must also have been benefited and must have enjoyed the context of, of these past four webinars which, were, which was done on, on conformity and it will definitely add value to their expertise and domain of work as well. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, Mr. Ajay Bajpayee on behalf of TNB Academy for taking out your valuable time and accepting our invita invitation to conduct all these webinars for us. Uh, on such a complex and, and uh, vast topic. I also thank all the participants for taking out time from their busy schedule and joining us in the webinar today. As I said, we will be again joining you soon with, with another concept of, of non-conformity soon. I wish you all the best of luck on behalf of TNB Academy for your future endeavors. Thank you so much.